this tutorial, I want to look at some of the improvements made to the Solid Edge Design Configurator. So um, I covered the general process from a couple of versions ago, and I'll put that in the uh, comment section. But uh, we just want to look at some of the improvements added in Solid Edge 2025. So one of the things that has been added is the ability to um, use a quick uh, action. So if you right mouse click on the part, so uh, step one is choosing the parts that you want to include in the design configurator. And as you can see, all the parts here have been added. Um, so going to quick actions, we can do an add variable, add property materials. So if you want to show, say, um, a different type of material for a part, you can then use the add materials and then use that later in a replace option. Uh, likewise, with variables, you can do an add variable and that shows the variables um, as in dimensions in this case or variables that are within the part that you have right mouse clicked on. So you can add that information in a lot clearer. So under step two, um, we add the parameters that you want to use for your um, overall assembly. And in this case, we've got four set up uh, length, which is this one here, depth, height, as in this one, and whole height. So these have been set up just as a text box. And um, for each one, you will see there is a JPEG associated with it to show what the actual dimension relates to so that when you come to um, run the design configurator, you'll see the exact thing shown as a graphical image, which gives it a lot more um, validity and makes it a lot easier to use. So now if we step through to step three, um, you'll see that I've added in a number of variables in here, um, global rules. So these are items which will define the name of the new part. So you can set it up so that it will just update the original assembly and original part files. But in this case, what I want to do is just create a totally whole new assembly uh, with new file names. So if we click on one of these, we've got a um, text variable and an expression. So if we just click on the function here, you'll see that we've added in a number of different um, components to build up the name. So initially we've got um, path to directory. So under functions that will come through as a um, path option. And in here you can do a path to directory and um, you put the full path in. So I've used that function and for the name of the part, I'm getting the default name. So these parts could be stored in separate folders. So we can make sure that all the parts go in the same folder. And basically what I've done is I've gone um, and replaced the full name and I've opened this up and gone to, so this is the carrier. So we can open the carrier. And if you double click on file name, it puts in assembly.carrier.file. So that extracts the path for where it's going to be stored. And then we use the plus symbol to add on extra information. So I've called this carrier underscore L. And I've used a double to string conversion. So in the functions, again, we've got a uh, conversion to string and then I've used because the variable is a double I've done a double to string which is this one here 
and that goes in there and then I've taken this component from the variables that we set up then I've got a underscore D and then the depth done in the same way then underscore H and height is put in there and then we finalize it with a dot PAR so that gives me my file name so um, the only one that we haven't done so far is to create one for the assembly name so I'm just using a simple expression rule and call this assembly name it's going to be text and I can then click on the function in here and I can paste that previous one back in so for the file name we want to um, get the assembly path and we want to call this so the assembly is called carrier so we can leave it as carrier and um, then you want the length height and depth so that defines that we can then go validate comes up okay so we can go okay and then that gets um, based on in here so that's um, step three we can add a number of different types of variables in here defining whatever we want to have so we could have a variable where the depth is a fraction of the um, length and it then automatically sets that up depending on on the length of the part so under step four um, we've got a number of things set up again so under the carrier we have um, we want to close all draft files within that are open in solid edge um, we want to set the length, depth, height, and whole height based on the input. So these are assembly variables. And then you want to do a model update to make it active. Solid edge, ISO view. So it turns it into a isometric view. So when you say that it's there. And then I will add in one extra. Um, option in here so I'm going to rename the model and this is going to go above the quick sheet so um, we want to go um, use the self option and um, we want to then change sorry wrong value double click on here go change and we want to have that as the assembly name so basically it's going to rename it. Then this is one of the new functions that's got a quick sheet. So what you can do is you can create quick sheets that um, will hold the drawing layouts of the various types of parts with all the dimensions, section views, whatever else it is you might want. Um, again, if you're not sure about quick sheets, I'll add in a uh, link to an old video of mine which talks about how to create quick sheets and um, basically that's going to run so um, what you can do is you can choose from the quick sheet um, folder under your templates folder in the program files um, which quick sheet you want to use and then it's going to change the extension to a DFT so that then goes through and does all that. So the order of these are relative. So it will do this one first, then it comes into the head and does a model update. It will do a replace to the um, description that we created in step three. And then it will do a um, quick sheet for that one as well. And then it will do it for um, the other two parts within the assembly. So the final stage is to run it to see how it works. We can change our sizes. So we will make this um, 290. We'll leave the width the same. We'll change the um, overall height to 340. 
and we'll increase the um, height to hold. So then we hit create and it goes through the uh, rules that we have defined and it will regenerate the um, part. You can see that it's changing the name in relation to the um, definition that we gave it in rule four. Um, so it's just rebuilding the model as it goes. So it changes the model, changes the um, file name, creates a quick sheet, and then finally it will update the assembly with the respective um, name changes. So it's a reasonably quick process. And once you've got it all defined, it's um, quick and easy to generate new um, assemblies and parts to um, work with your new um, setup. It is possible that you might have to go in and um, regenerate some of the uh, views, but um, that's still a small um, process. So you can see that we've got the uh, new file names and uh, we can go to the log file and that will show you uh, what it's done. If you've got any errors, it'll also show you um, what those errors are and you can go through and reassess those. Um, you can pack and go, I saved it to the same folder, so you could use pack and go to put it into a new folder and um, maybe send it out to a customer. So I hope that you found this interesting and um, you may want to give this a try yourself.